Okay, it's your buddy Mike Messier, and this is an exclusive video for WWE fans or pro wrestling fans in general. <clears throat> so what are we going to do with these future uh, endeavored wrestlers from WWE? We're going to have a special pay-per-view called Chopping Block that WWE talent releases future endeavors pay-per-view. That's right, Chopping Block. The WWE talent releases future endeavored pay-per-view. I even took notes on this thing. So these are all my original ideas. Instead of just firing these people and sending them about their merry way, let's go out with a bang. Have a nice firing pay-per-view and maybe salvage some of these people and save a job or two. So <clears throat> the first thing that happens is they have an opening segment where they fire the backstage personnel. Uh, the, the, the commentators or uh, the, the behind the scenes people that they no longer like, the writers, uh, the janitors, uh, the agents, anyone like that uh, can get fired and uh, maybe give them a, 10 seconds to say goodbye. So a nice vignette, a nice, this, this is serious business. So we wanna show these backstage people, you know, like Mike Chioda last year or Mike Rotundo, they can do a little clip about how they feel about getting fired from WWE, uh, their great experiences working with the company, if they have enough money to support themselves, if they're worried about their future and their family's future, just something that really set the tone to raise the stakes of this pay-per-view. And that'll be nice. <clears throat> then we get into some, uh, we, we also want to know that we have uh, on site at this pay-per-view job counselors. Uh, job counselors that are going to help the, the, the former WWE talent find new jobs, uh, whether it's car as karaoke hosts or uh, strippers for some of the women wrestlers or maybe the male wrestlers too. And um, what else can they do? They can uh, bag uh, groceries, they can be uh, fitness instructors uh, and so forth, competitive eaters. Uh, so we have, these are the matches, folks, so we have some really great matches. Uh, we start off with a grudge match, uh, two former tag team partners fighting uh, to, to keep a job and to keep food on the table. Important for these two big men, Tucker versus Otis. That's right, Tucker versus Otis, and they've been friends, they've, they've uh, feuded, and if Tucker versus Otis, the loser, uh, gets fired, okay? Now we have a next match is, is uh, after that intense matchup, we have kind of a, a let me up match, a comedy match. Mojo Rowley versus a uh, long-standing uh, fav favorite of Vince, uh, R-Truth. So Mojo Rowley versus R-Truth, once again, loser gets fired. Now don't worry, fans, because one of these fired wrestlers uh, at Chopping Block will have a second chance. We move on to the women's division. Uh, lovely Chelsea Green, young upstart, <clears throat> and she's still nursing her arm injury, but she'll have to come out to the ring regardless of the state of her arm, and she'll have to fight for her professional life as she takes on Ruby Riot. That's right, uh, Ruby Riot, you didn't see that coming, but you're in this thing. Ruby Riot has to fight for her professional career uh, against Chelsea Green. Now we have the IWC uh, Dream or Nightmare match. One of your favorites will be fired on Chopping Block. Andre versus Aleister Black. Two guys that are favorite with the NXT audience, but not favorite with Vince. They'll have to fight for their jobs uh, on Chopping Block. Andre versus Aleister Black. Uh, <clears throat> now we have a Forgotten Sons Triangle match. The three Forgotten Sons will be wrestling each other, and the loser of the fall will be fired. Now, as a special uh, surprise ending, they do a back suplex, like a triple back suplex. All three men's shoulders end up on the mat. The refer uh, two referees come into the ring and count both pairs of shoulders down, uh, and so everybody's pinned and everybody gets fired. So that's a, a shocking development, and everyone's excited to see all three of these guys lose their jobs. Uh, but don't worry, they, they might get voted back in later. We'll get to that. Now we go to the women's tag team division where the beautiful, the sexy, uh, Iconics, even though they lost a stipulation where they could no longer be a team, we're going to ignore that stipulation as WWE typically ignores stipulations and they will have to team up together to fight for their jobs against um, uh, the, the lovely Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Uh, an additional stipulation 
uh, to this match is that if Dana is pinned, she must have all plastic uh, removed from her face. Uh, that's just a joke, okay? We won't really, well, okay, we'll put that stipulation in because you liked it so much. So Dana has the added stipulation, if she gets pinned, she has the plastic uh, enhancements removed from her face. Uh, Mandy and Dana Brooke tag teaming to face the Iconics, the loser of the fall uh, must get fired. Uh, let's see here. We do have uh, a chump battle royal where we just take all the chumps uh, in the WWE, throw them in the battle royal, and tell them uh, to fight and to see who wins. Lars Sullivan wins that battle royal, but the surprise swerve, bro, is that the winner of the battle royal actually gets fired. So Lars Sullivan, thinking he's doing a good thing and winning the battle royal, in fact, is fired on the spot. Then we go to a, a women's match. Uh, Mickey James, the veteran, uh, comes in and she gets uh, to wrestle Charlotte. That's right, Charlotte, who we're not sure if she's pregnant. We're not sure if she has uh, COVID-19. But suddenly, she's fighting for her professional life against the veteran Mickey James. That's right. And once again, the loser is fired from WWE. Future endeavored. Uh, the job counselors are busy running around, talking to all the talent, trying to counsel them, trying to get them jobs, uh, bagging groceries or being karaoke hosts or strippers uh, and so forth. So very exciting. Uh, let's see what else. Now we go to a high-flying luchador match. This is a pretty good card, folks. Rey Mysterio Jr. will be taking on Kalisto. That's right. Rey Mysterio Jr., the veteran uh, who could have gone elsewhere, you know, last summer, but decided to stick around. He'll be fighting to keep food on his table, to keep food on Dominic's table, to keep food on his daughter's table, and he'll be fighting none other than Kalisto. And we're not sure if this is the original Kalisto or Kalisto number three or Kalisto number 16, but Kalisto and Rey Mysterio will be having a match, a generational battle, and the loser will be fired. Uh, let's see, have I forgotten anything? Uh, yes, there's a big main event coming up. Oh, also, a special unannounced bonus match. Bo Dallas will come into the ring, uh, declare how happy he is that he has been forgotten about so much that he wasn't even put on this card. He will cut a scathing promo about nothing, and then the lights will go off in the arena, and The Fiend will come out magically, and The Fiend will destroy Bo Dallas, his own brother, and send him into oblivion, and send him into uh, being fired. So no more Bo Dallas. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, the job counselors are fervishly trying to find people new jobs. Uh, the Forgotten Sons triangle match with the double suplex. Uh, Mojo Rally, Chelsea Green, uh, all these wonderful things. And then we get to our main event of the show, folks. This is what everybody paid their big money for. Very exciting. Former Bruno Belt Lineage World Wrestling Entertainment Champion, the one and only Jinder Mahal. Yes, Jinder Mahal will be fighting for his professional life, folks, taking on Samoa Joe. So Samoa Joe and Jinder Mahal will have a loser gets fired from the WWE match. And uh, this will be the main event. And as you might know, everyone's expecting that Samoa Joe leaving the ring announcer's booth in this special challenge match. Uh, Ginger McCall has called him out. That long-standing political rivalry between uh, India and Samoa uh, will be now be taking place. And everyone's excited. And uh, surprisingly and shockingly, Ginger Mahal uh, wins. Ginger Mahal wins and Samoa Joe who obviously has very little talent, very little skill as a professional wrestler, according to the World Wrestling Entertainment. Uh, Samoa Joe gets pinned and humiliated, and he's fired. Now, folks, you might be saying, oh, oh my goodness, oh, gee whiz, all these wonderful talents, Chelsea Green fired, uh, Andre fired, uh, but, but, uh, but Alistair Black gets to stick around. All three Forgotten Sons are fired. Horrible, horrible. Uh, the Iconics losing in an upset to Mandy and Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke getting to keep the plastic in her face. The Iconics are fired. Holy God, Mickey James lost to Charlotte. She's fired. Lars Sullivan won the Battle Royal, so he's fired. Oh my goodness. The job counselors. Uh, Tucker losing to Otis. Kalisa losing to Rey Mysterio. They're both fired. Uh, Mojo Raleigh losing to R-Truth. He's fired. 
what could possibly salvage this pay-per-view idea of chopping block the WWE talent releases future endeavored pay-per-view there's only one thing that can save this folks and that's a fan vote that's right the last half hour of the show uh, is is uh, Peter or Michael whatever his name is and uh, the, the girl with the face Charlie Caruso and Booker T and John Bradshaw Layfield sitting around a table and they are waiting for the poll results. So it's a half hour of the four of them, John Bradshaw Layfield, Booker T, uh, Charlie Caruso and Peter Baldguy discussing the ramifications of this exciting pay-per-view. While your votes come in, you get to save one of these losers. One of these people, whether it's Samoa Joe, uh, the Iconics will count them as a unit. Uh, Lars Sullivan mysteriously is not on the ballot. But you will be uh, encouraged to, to text or vote or, or call or email or call me and Gene at the 800 number uh, to save one of these losers. Uh, and, you know, the, the rest of them will be shipped uh, immediately. They'll be sent to VFWs across the country with plenty of masks and plenty of vaccines uh, to give into the arms of fans. As you enter these VFWs to see these former WWF talents, you will be vaccinated in your eyeball and you will be safe uh, from everything. So it's very exciting uh, chopping block. The WWE talent releases future endeavor pay-per-view. Uh, it's such an exciting situation that I wrote notes. Uh, it took me about six minutes to write these notes. And I'm very exciting, uh, very excited to, to, to present this idea. Uh, hopefully, the WWE will will come to their conclusion that why should we uh, not profit from this situation? Every year, the fans of wrestling get excited to find out which of their favorite wrestlers will be fired and humiliated. Why don't we make some money off of that? So that's it, folks. Uh, let's. We'll also have um, after the wrestlers lose. Uh, some of them can beg. They can beg and offer to shave themselves bald to keep a job. Uh, Retribution as a unit uh, can do a promo where they're so excited to keep their jobs, even though they're out to destroy the company. So the whole WWE uh, chopping block, the WWE Future Endeavors pay-per-view, I'm very excited to have this wonderful idea and to share it with all the intelligent WWE fans.